Hello and welcome to City Point Church online live stream. We're so glad that you could join us today. We're continuing in our sermon series on The Chosen. It is just wonderful. You have to download the app and watch with us. But before we hear from Jim Bob, we're gonna worship together. So turn up your volume and let's sing.
good to worship together. Speaking of worshiping together, Pop-Up Church tonight. If you're watching this live on the 26th, we're going to be at the Apollo at 6 p.m. You're not going to want to miss it. You're invited. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook. 
like the live stream and share it with somebody who needs to go to church today. Hey, if you'd like to give to the ministry at City Point, there are two really easy ways. You can give online, citypointchurch.tv forward slash give. You can also give by the mail at the address below. While you're taking care of all that, we're finally into fall, officially. And Arkansas even gave us two cool days this week. So I wanna know from you down in the chat, let me know what do you look forward to when it comes to the season of fall? Let's get into it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives. And recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. And to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. What do you want from me? Glad you're here. Well, we are continuing to work through this worldwide phenomenon called the chosen. Never has Jesus been more realistically or accurately depicted on screen than in this television series. The hook set deep in me in the very first episode, but this episode we're going to watch together this week. Episode seven. Oh man. It took me to a place in my walk with the Lord that I've never been before. It's that good. It is by far my favorite episode of both season one and season two. And the moment in episode seven that just exploded with meaning and inspiration for me centered around a conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus. We've talked a little bit about this character, Nicodemus, he was a wealthy, influential leader and teacher, a member of Israel's highest ruling council, the Sanhedrin, which was a part of the Pharisee group. Nicodemus represented the absolute best and highest attainment in Jewish society and culture. He would have most, if not all, of the Old Testament committed to memory. Crazy. He knew the prophecies predicting the coming Messiah, God's anointed one to save the world. So when Nicodemus began to hear about Jesus' miracles and his authoritative teaching, boy, he just had to get a closer look. So he came to Jesus under the cover of nightfall, wanting to know more. And Nicodemus begins with these words to Jesus. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God for no one could perform the signs you were doing if God were not with him. Nicodemus, it was important for him to let Jesus know that he knew something of God was in him, that he had to have come from God. And so Jesus' response to this elite member of Israel's teacher of teachers was peculiar. Jesus responds to Nicodemus saying, you must be from God. And Jesus says, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Jesus, in effect, tells Nicodemus that who he is, that what he's done, that the position he has maintained is not enough to even see the kingdom of God. That any hope Nicodemus has in entering into God's kingdom demands a restart. Letting go of everything that he has accomplished up to this point would be necessary if he wanted to see God's kingdom. Nicodemus came wanting to know more and Jesus told him that he didn't need more knowledge but he needed a complete start over from the beginning, that everything he had learned up to this point 
would have no bearing or no influence or no power in him being able to see heaven. Nicodemus believed that the only way to God and into God's kingdom was through the understanding and observance of God's law. That's what all these people from the Old Testament believed. The problem was they kept hitting up against God's holy law with imperfections. They couldn't get over that holy law. They couldn't get over that wall. It was too much. But here was Jesus saying, if you want to be a part of God's kingdom, you've got to have a restart. You've got to start all over from birth. And when Jesus said being reborn, Nicodemus just didn't understand that. Look what he said in verse 4. How can someone be born when they are old? Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. And of course here Jesus was not talking about something physical. That was where Nicodemus was stuck. He was stuck on the physical, on the observance of the law, on doing what the law required. But here Jesus was talking about something spiritual, something that didn't wear out, something that wasn't temporary. Look at Jesus' explanation. Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. Let's back up just for a second. How responsible are any of us for our own personal birth? <laughs> Our physical birth happened with God bringing together a part of our dad and a part of our mom, and then he formed us inside of our mother. If we had nothing to do with our own physical birth, but it is in fact God's grace putting us together, doesn't it make sense that our spiritual birth would also be by God's grace putting us together? It must have been quite a shock to Nicodemus to learn that he could do nothing to earn or to find his way into God's kingdom. And that presents a struggle because we human beings really have a difficulty with accepting grace. Flannery O'Connor noted, all human nature vigorously resists grace because grace changes us and the change is painful. We just don't want to accept something that we didn't have some hand in receiving. Janelle Perez, a VA nurse, explained the struggle from her standpoint. She's a member of the Los Angeles VA's assertive community treatment team. They spend their time trying to find the 6,000 or so veterans who are sleeping on the streets in the LA area needing care. She doesn't wear nurses' scrubs or carry a medical bag, but she does have a backpack with some medical supplies in it. She explains, quote, We find homeless veterans in the community and offer them field-based services that include primary care, psychiatric care, and social services. We try to build a relationship with them, she says. Our goal is to gradually get them to accept continued care from us as well as housing, but the trust building process can be painfully slow. She said, it can take two to three months before they even let you take their blood pressure. They have to get to know you first. Life on the street is hard and these veterans are instinctively defensive. They don't trust you right away. They have to protect themselves. Perez said that, a convincing, that convincing a homeless veteran to accept housing is a major step. Quote, she says, once they agree to be housed, we determine the best kind of housing for them based on our evaluation of their health care needs. Okay, think about this example and how it relates to Nicodemus and all of us in our situations in accepting grace, accepting God's spiritual health care. Jesus is calling us to leave behind any confidence that we have in ourselves, any accomplishments that we've achieved, and to go with him. 
In short, to repent of who we are and what we know and to follow him, to relinquish control, to choose obedience and faith and to do whatever he says. For Nicodemus, he would be giving up a life of notoriety and luxury. Temporary, albeit, but even so, a pretty good life back in those days. But he would give it up to gain what? To gain something far greater that would never end. What about us? Here's the question for us to consider. What is Jesus calling me to leave behind in order to follow him? Do some of you have some answers that just pop immediately into your thinking? Some of us, the answers are there, but we've buried them so far down between, down below distractions and life and activity, and we choose not to think about it much. But we should think about it. What is Jesus calling me to leave behind in order to follow him? There's no seeing God's kingdom without starting over in Jesus. Does our temporary life here on earth really hold something for us that is greater than entering into God's eternal kingdom? Is it even possible for us to find entrance to that kingdom on our own? Think about someone like the thief that was next to Jesus on the cross. Up to this point, his life has been wasted with sin and rebellion. D.L. Moody said, The thief had nails through both hands so that he could not work his way to heaven. He had a nail through each foot so that he could not run errands for the Lord. He could not lift a hand or a foot toward his salvation, and yet Christ offered him the gift of God, and he took it. Christ threw him a passport and took him into paradise. The only hope this thief had was the gift of grace. His hopelessness drove him to hope. My daily devotional readings just this past week on the 20th on Monday said this, only people who acknowledge how deep their need is and who admit that they have no ability whatsoever to meet that need on their own get excited about the grace that meets every one of their spiritual needs. Hopelessness is the doorway to hope. Seeing yourself as hopeless and helpless, if left to yourself, initiates and ignites your pursuit of God's grace. Y'all, isn't that what it means to be born again? To realize, I, I, I gotta have a do-over, I gotta start over. I, all of us have already made a mess of our physical life. We need a restart with somebody else calling the shots, creating a new spiritual being covered in the blood of Jesus. And that new birth is only found in him. In him, all shame is gone. In him, his love is undeniable and, and grace Y'all, his grace, it, it just goes on and on and on. I'm telling you, Jesus is worthy. He's worthy.
Jesus.
I so wish I could watch episode seven with you this week. I'd like to just watch your face at different moments. It, I, I can't wait to watch it again. Drink in deeply every word of truth, the extent of God's love in sending his son for us. I'm telling you, it's beyond comparison. It's beyond comparison. Have a great week. Grace, what have you done? Murdered for me on that cross Accused in absence of wrong My sin washed away in your blood Too much to make sense of it all I know that your love breaks my fall Scandal of grace, you died in my place, oh my soul will live. Oh, to be like you, I give all I have just to know you. Jesus, there's no one beside you, forever the hope in Your power is as dead as my sin The cross has taught me to live And mercy my heart now to sing The day and its trouble shall come I know that your strength is enough the scandal of grace, you died in my place, oh my soul will live. Oh, to be like you, I give all I have just to know you. Jesus, there's no one beside you, forever the hope is. Open my heart